Well, these last few weeks, if you guys have been here, you know we've covered some kind of interesting, t fairly tough topics. But uh, while I am pretty glad we have moved past those, uh, I'm glad we're able to dive into them. I really am. You know, talking from everything about sexuality and marriage and divorce and all these things we've gone over in 1 Corinthians, I would think it's important that we study God's Word. To be honest with you guys, I actually believe this entire book is truth. And so that means that it is vital to living our life, which also means we can't skip the tough parts when we come upon them. And so as you guys know, I'm a I'm a verse by verse preacher. I just go through the word. We're going to it's going to take us a while, but we're going to get through this Bible together. And uh, I think that's important because that means we get to see everything it says, everything in it. We're going to hit on it. And so I'm excited about that. And so this morning we're going to continue in First Corinthians. Um, we're going to move on to another really great message. And so this is going to be about living as we are called. And so we know from Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 10 tells us that we are set apart by God. We're sanctified. What it means to be a saint, right? We are saints. If you're a believer, you're a saint. You're set apart by God. He doesn't set us apart for nothing, to sit still. He sets us apart. He calls us to do great things in his name. We know that. And so there is a section in the passage last week, if you remember, we read all the way through the end of chapter 7, but there's a little bit in the middle I kind of didn't speak on. I saved it for this week. And so we're going to continue in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to be verses 17 through 24. That's what we're going to concentrate this morning, verses 17 through 24 together. So if you can, turn with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to read that passage together this morning. Again, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 17 through 24. If you are there, if you'll stand with me as we read the Word of God together this morning. Paul continues and says, Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bond servant when called? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who is called in the Lord as a bond servant is a freed man of the Lord. Likewise, he who is free when called is a bond servant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. Let's pray. Lord, I'm so thankful for this passage this morning that we can just dive further into your truth and look at what it means to be called by you right where we are. I pray this morning that we can each take a humble look at ourselves and our life and say, are we doing that? Are we living the life we were called? Lord, if not, God, would you change us this morning? For those that are, God, would you encourage them and strengthen them in their walk? We just look forward to growing closer to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you can imagine here that the people in Corinth had some questions about whether they could serve God correctly in their lives based upon the situations they were in. And so there's probably a group in the church that decided they were going to wait until their situation got a little better before they would really serve God, right? They had some things to take care of first. Maybe they needed to be circumcised, they thought, before they could do anything. Maybe they were a slave and they wanted to be freed before they would do anything. You see these different situations. Even some we heard from, you know, last week we saw that man, I'm married, but now I'm a believer and my husband or my wife isn't a believer. So maybe I need to get divorced first before I can do something. Or what should I do? They seemed confused because the situation they were in seemed like it was not quite right to serve God. And let me tell you, we do that too. You see, all of us are called with a specific purpose right where we are. You are not only enough for what God, God called you to do, you are perfect for it. But sometimes we're often looking for something else. Sometimes we're distracted. 
Sometimes in the middle of a service, there's a five minute countdown going on and we are just so curious about what is going to happen at the end of that five minutes that we can't even concentrate on what the preacher is saying. Sometimes a random cell phone that didn't happen to be so random starts ringing in the middle of the message and we're wondering who in the world's got their cell phone on? Turn that thing off. Whew, you guys are wondering, man, Bella's about to get in trouble. You see, oftentimes in our life, there are distractions keeping us from doing what we know we are supposed to be doing. Oftentimes, when we're trying to pay attention to the sermon, something gets in the way. But we know what we're supposed to do at church, right? We're supposed to come and worship and listen, but things can get in the way, can't they? You see, our life is just like that. Because there's often times in our life that we get distracted from what we know God's called us to do right now. There are times in our life when we're waiting for something to happen in the future. So much so that we can't concentrate on what God is doing in our life right now. The question is, what are we waiting for before we start actually fully following God with our life? What are we waiting for? We see here that there are people that were waiting for something. Oh, I'm a, I'm a bond servant. I got to get free of that. Either. There's things I got to do first in the church in Corinth. Man, are you looking for ways to do ministry where you're at? Because God has actually perfectly called you, perfectly gifted you, and placed you in the situation you're at right now. Whether you think it's a good one or a bad one, God's got you there on purpose. Are you looking for God in your situation right now? Are you looking for ways to do ministry where God has you? Because that can be at work or at school. That can be on the soccer field or practice with your kids. You see, we don't have to wait to get out of those situations to follow God. Sometimes God says, hey, listen, I put you there on purpose. Sometimes we look for some future moment, some right set of situations or scenarios to play out before we'll really do what we know God calls us to do. We do this in church. We do this in our life. You know, sometimes we just need the right music or the right worship set, the right volume before we're actually going to engage in worship. Because this morning, guess what? We didn't have our full band, did we? But were we able to worship? We should be able to worship no matter who's up here or what's up here. Are we waiting for some right set of scenarios before we're actually going to worship? We wait until maybe we can get more prepared. Maybe we'll get more knowledgeable. Maybe we can get more free before we actually start serving in our church. We, we wait until maybe we're going to make a little bit more money or we get a few things settled in our life before we'll actually start giving offering as God's demanded it to us of us. We wait until we get out of the tough situations in our life before we actually start committing to God with our life. Sometimes we wait until our kids get older. Or we wait until our lives get less busy before we actually say, no, I'm really going to make it a priority to be at church. Sometimes we wait for those perfect windows in our relationship. Before we'll actually share the gospel. Before we'll actually tell people about the love of Christ. All these perfect stars got aligned before I'm going to be willing to put myself out there to do that. We wait so often for future moments. And we forget that God is working right now. Because there's always going to be something else that keeps us from following God the way he intends. There's always going to be a distraction. There's always going to be a future moment that may seem like a better moment in our life to do what God's called in the one we're in right now. But if we spend our entire life looking for a way out of our current situation, and if we start looking for ways to serve God in it, we'll start noticing that He is at work all around us. Because if we spend our time looking to the future, we're going to miss what God's doing right now. You know, I was talking to my wife about this, and she reminded me about the kind of the idea of the life of a child. Um, man, God speaks a lot about children and a childlike faith, how we should be like children so often in the scriptures. And um, as you guys know, my oldest boy, Elijah, he's three, three and a half. And I can tell you, he lives fully in each moment, right? He is rarely, if ever, concerned about later in the day. He's definitely not ever concerned about next week. He probably can't even comprehend the idea of next month or next year. Right? He seeks to live out each moment the best way he knows how. Now, I will tell you, God does want us to be smart, right? He wants us to plan and be prepared for things in our life to some extent. But what he truly wants is he wants us to seek him in every moment. 
C.S. Lewis says, no, it was Spurgeon. It was Spurgeon who said, I wish that I could even stop planning 15 minutes from now so that I could live fully with God in each moment. I thought, how great that is, because we're, we're always expecting some other scenario, some future, future time, and we, we miss God moving. And I can tell you that, that looks different for each person. So he has placed you in a different circumstance with different gifts and different abilities, but he's called all of us to something right now. And I can tell you, you are perfectly gifted. You're perfectly situated to do a work with the Lord right now that not even I can do. Amen. Right? Because you are the one placed there. Okay. And so sometimes we expect other people to do the work around us and, and we sit back and we think they're going to do it. But I'm telling you, you are incredible. If you only realized that before creation, God chose you to be born at this time. And to live in this place and to have those friends and to be at that job and to have those gifts so that he could use you. See, he chose to use you. You are an incredible tool for the Lord. He can do incredible things with you. But we've got to be willing to look for him right now. Man, I can't tell you exactly what it is in your situation. In your personal life, in your marriage, in your work. I can't tell you exactly what that looks like, but I can tell you that if you start looking for God right now, you'll see him moving. You'll see him moving in every day, in every part of your life. You don't have to be a pastor or a, a senior leader of some sort to be used by God. Look in your situations when you're with your friends or your family or you're out on the soccer fields. You're working in the yard. Whatever it may be, God can use you right now. And we, we see that there are some things, though, that we know God's called us all to do. Church is a good picture of that. Things in this church we know the Scripture talks to us about. Hebrews 10 shows us that we need to be at church. We need to be in fellowship. We need to be in discipleship with one another. We see that in the Scriptures. 1 Peter 4.10 tells us that each one of us are specially gifted. And that gift is meant to be used for the body of Christ. That's the church. That's each other. It says that's what our gifts are for. And I can tell you, there are some people in this church that have been doing that thing. They have been using their gifts. They're serving in church. And you know what they need? They don't need to do more. They need a break. But I can tell you, there's some people in church that are afraid to take that break because they're afraid that someone else isn't going to step to the plate and cover it. I can tell you, trust the Lord with what he's doing in your life. Right now. Trust that he's going to take care of it. But I can tell you, there's a whole other group that are waiting for some set of circumstances or scenarios to actually start serving the Lord. Kind of like the people in Corinth seem to be, ah, i got to wait for this, or maybe I need to do this first before God can use me. He can use you right now. Did you know that you have a gift that is meant for this church, if you're a part of this church? And we are a body missing a body part if you're not serving God's called you right now. You don't need to get more prepared, more knowledgeable, more something. There doesn't need to be some future time when your life is a little easier to do it. Some of you need a break, but some of you need to start serving the Lord now. Because Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? All of you, a lot of you have taken my um, foundations class. We know this verse that calls us, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And it continues and it says, Do not be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you can test God's will, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What it's telling us is, if you want to know what's God's will in your life, start serving Him with your life. Come on. Just get going. And you'll see him working. So you don't need to wait for some great set of complicated scenarios to come to pass where you feel prepared. If you want to know what God's doing in your life right now, dig in. Dive in. Amen. Try something. I say this all the time in our church. Try something out. Man, I think maybe children's ministry might be a place for me. Go serve. Maybe you like it. Maybe you hate it. Maybe you're not meant to work with kids. Maybe it'll drive you nuts. I don't know. But try it out. See. And then go try something else. And find, where has God called me? Where has he gifted me? You're only going to know by trying. And Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, if you want to know how to test God's will in your life, 
offer your bodies as a sacrifice. Be transformed in the image of Christ in your mind by actually knowing his word, by serving, by trying out. So let me tell you, try. Let me tell you about a little few things. I'm going to give you practical possibilities for application this morning. Right? Because this message from 1 you know, Corinthians, the church of Corinth, is a message that says, right now, God's calling you for something. And like I said, I, I don't know what that may be in your life, personally, or your work, or your marriage. But let's talk church. Let me give you some opportunities in this church to know what's going on in this church. How do I, how do, I do that, Pastor? How do I get plugged in right now? How do I get plugged into more fellowship and discipleship? How do I get plugged into serving and finding what my gifts are? Let me tell you some things going on in the life of this church. So, 9 o'clock this morning, we had Sunday school. We happen to do that every Sunday morning. We have a few different Sunday school classes we would love for you to be a part of. Not only would I love it, the scriptures, Hebrews 10, really points to that idea of it. And so we've got a group probably for everybody here. Not only do we have children's uh, ministry open at 9 o'clock, we've got youth open at 9 o'clock. Children's in the two-store. Youth is upstairs um, above the classrooms. We've got a, I don't know what we call Steve's class. Steve's class. <laughs> it's got a young adult college and career. Feel young, look young, whatever it may be. We've got a great class. That's Steve. Steve, you want to wave? That's Steve right there. Just down this hallway. He's got a class that meets. It's great and exciting. It's kind of bursting at the seams, but we can always add more people. Wade's got an adult class, kind of a general adult class. Wade, where are you at? There he is. That's Wade. He's got a class. I guarantee you he'd love to have you. I've heard a lot of great things about what's going on in that class. We've got a women's group. Where, women's, where are my women's class at? i got a women's class that meets in, what's your classroom? I don't know. What are the classes? Somebody will point you in the right direction. <laughs> Eddie's got a great senior adults class. Man, that is kicking. That class has been meeting. I don't think they ever stopped meeting. And, uh, and so let me tell you, there's a place where you can plug in. Come at 9 o'clock. There's a class for you. That's fellowship. That's discipleship. That's iron sharpening iron. That's living life together. Right? The scripture is demanded of us. Are, are we going to wait for some set of scenarios? Man, if my work schedule gets better because I'm just tired. What are we waiting for to plug in? I mean, there's a lot of ways to serve. I'm, I'm hoping you've got a little um, welcome card, visitor card in the seat in front of you, in the pew in front of you. And on there, you can write your name and mark something about a ministry you're interested in. There's a lot of ways to serve in this church. There's a lot of things we're doing. Everything from Sunday morning to we have children's ministry, we have nursery and preschool, and then a kid's church over here at 9 o'clock and at 1030, where we have rotations of people that serve. Jared would love to have you and youth helping out. We've got ushers. We've got greeters. We've got a worship team that's on rotation. You even saw this morning our pianist was sick and our drummer couldn't be there for practice. And so we had a simplified worship team. We'd love to have you. If you want to try out for the worship team, we'd love for you to take a shot at that. See if that's what God could be doing in your life. There's lots of ways to get plugged in. We have people doing mission work. Every week, it seems like, in the past month, we've talked about mission work going on. We're still partnered with Mobile Missions, and we have, I think, a team coming to stay here real soon. Um, this coming week, even, in the next few weeks. Come get plugged in with the work they're doing. we got VBS coming up real soon. Bobby's going to be trying to get you to sign up to help with that. Get plugged in. That's a great opportunity to see if working with kids could be for you. we got men's events coming up. You know, we... We've got people like Steve that go preach on some Thursday nights in Tulsa. We've got the priesthood motorcycle ministry right here. The president of the priesthood motorcycle ministry for the Osage chapter is here. It's our church. That's us. We'd love for you to get plugged in in these different ways. But find where God has gifted you and called you and try. Start living your life for him and see what he could be doing. Because there's ways to do it. The only excuse we have left is... I just don't really want to yet. I don't think that's good enough. God's called us. And so we have to ask ourselves, and I can tell you, you guys have been an incredible church in this question. What is God doing right now? And I've been so impressed with you guys lately by what we've been doing. We, we saw some amazing things. Um, and despite the terrible situations, the flood and the things that have gone on, as a church, you guys stepped up. And you said, this is what God's doing right now. It's not convenient for our church to have two ACs blow with 12 people living in our church because they don't have homes and to serve meals every day and to have our sewage back up and our lights go out. And 
That's not easy and convenient. If that's what we're looking for, that's not where God is. But you guys stepped up and you did it. You know, we had the commissioner here last week presenting us with an award. Um, Jared and Bobby and I were um, at a meeting with some pastors and the, um, the mayor of the city actually presented us with another proclamation and award as the mayor came to, gave to us as a church, to you, as a church for what you've done. That's what it looks like to say, I'm not looking for some convenient set of circumstances. I'm going to look for God right now, right where I'm at, whether that's at work, at, at school, i with my kids, whatever it may be, God can use you right now. So, if we know God's calling, <coughs> like verse 17 says, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. If we know God's calling, are we willing to listen and obey? That's the question we have to ask. Do you realize how powerful a force for good you are right where he has you. So let's stop looking for a way out of our situation and start looking for God in it. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me?